with a deal set to be 100% done. Oh, he'll be, he'll be at Newcastle next week. 100%. 100%. And, yeah. Tapsoba has also dropped a massive update on his future after Newcastle Open talks. Final one about yourself. There are all sorts of stories. You know what's coming. You're here for the season, right? I'm you didn't have to cut me off. Right. In a grueling match, Newcastle managed to bag a point against Bournemouth. From the super subs to the VAR and referee assist to revealing Eddie Howe's tactical problem. As per, join us as we discuss the five things we learned from Bournemouth. One Newcastle United one. Let's go. Starting off with Eddie Howe's lineup problem. Once again, Newcastle fans were left scratching their heads at Eddie Howe's team selection, with the manager's decision to start Lloyd Kelly over the inform Lewis Hall proving to be a costly one. Howe's risk-averse approach was evident in his choice to field the more experienced Kelly potentially wary of how Hall had struggled with the physicality of Bournemouth's Semenyo in a previous encounter at this ground. However, this conservative move backfired as Lloyd Kelly failed to cope with the threat posed by the visitors' man of the match, Semenyo. The Bournemouth winger often had the better of Kelly, putting the Newcastle fullback on the back foot and causing problems down his side. The goal that ultimately decided the match came from a cross down Kelly's flank, summing up the defenders' struggles on the day which were reflected in his underwhelming 6.5 match rating. Offensively, Kelly offered little, managing just 44 touches, no key passes, no accurate crosses, and no accurate long balls. In contrast, the introduction of Hall in the second half provided a much needed injection of drive and quality on the ball. Despite only playing 21 minutes, Hall registered a more impressive 7.2 match rating, showcasing his superior technical ability with 20 touches, 86% passing accuracy, one key pass, one accurate cross, and two accurate long balls. The decision to start Kelly over Hall proved to be a costly one, as the former failed to provide the necessary defensive solidity or attacking threat that Hall has demonstrated in recent outings. Howe's cautious approach backfired and even cost me points in my fantasy team, as I had Lewis Hall. With Hall's impressive cameo, the clamour for the young fullback to be given a more prominent role will only grow louder. Howe must find a way to balance his team's defensive needs with the attacking dynamism that Hall can provide. Then the second key takeaway from Newcastle's disappointing result was the glaring lack of quality within the squad, a problem that has seemingly persisted despite the club's financial resources and ambition. The performance of players like Sean Longstaff and Jacob Murphy highlighted the technical limitations that continue to hamper the Magpies' progress at the highest level. Longstaff, in particular, struggled to impose himself on the game, managing just 40 touches, 30 accurate passes, one key pass, zero accurate crosses, and zero long balls, thereby offering little in the way of creativity, as evidenced by his 6.8 match rating. Despite a few tidy one-twos with Bruno Guimaraes, who had an 8.0 match rating, winning a massive 11 out of 13 ground duels, being central to Newcastle's creativity as shown in the passing networks, and being the highest of any player in progression via carry and pass, Longstaff appeared slow and one-paced, easily muscled off the ball on several occasions. This was a far cry from the dynamic, progressive play that Newcastle fans have come to expect from their midfielders. Similarly, Murphy failed to deliver, losing the ball more than any other player, recording a 6.5 match rating with no shots, no successful dribbles, and a passing accuracy of just 67%. The winger managed just one key pass, zero accurate cross, and one accurate long ball out of five attempts, providing little in the way of attacking threat or end product. It's also worth mentioning that a large part of our first half issues were with playing out. And when you have a Kraft and Burn pairing, that's expected. The return of Botman, Cher, and a potential new signing I will discuss later in the video, fixes that. Otherwise, these performances serve as a stark reminder that although some Newcastle players have the attitude and passion, Newcastle's squad still lacks the overall quality required to compete at the highest level consistently. The much-vaunted pressing game that has been a hallmark of Eddie Howe's tenure appears to be faltering, further exposing the technical deficiencies within the squad. As Newcastle embark on the next stage of their ambitious project, the club must be ruthless in its pursuit of players who can elevate the overall quality of the squad. Mere pre-season performances are no longer enough. The time has come for the Magpies to make the leap, and compete with the best that the Premier League has to offer. Then the third thing we learned was the super subs. While the performance of Newcastle's starting 11 left much to be desired, 
the impact of the substitutes provided a glimmer of hope and highlighted the technical quality that the magpies are so desperately lacking. The introduction of Lewis Hall and Kieran Trippier in the second half proved to be a game-changer, with both players showcasing the kind of quality that Newcastle will need if they are to continue their upward trajectory. Trippier, in particular, demonstrated his value to the team, allowing Newcastle to maintain possession and control the tempo of the game more effectively. The fullback's technical ability on the ball was evident in his pinpoint passes and dangerous deliveries from set pieces, underlining the importance of his presence in the side. Very few fullbacks with his ball playing ability, with his crossing ability, with his set play delivery, etc. etc. And um, he really helped us today, calm things down, as you say, used his experience and um, brought a renewed threat with Anthony on our right hand side. So uh, I love Kieran as a footballer, I always have. I've managed him twice, I've been very lucky to do so, and I'm desperate to keep him. Interestingly, Kieran Trippier left the field emotional as he thanked the away fans at the Vitality Stadium, with some speculating that it might have been a goodbye amid his potential exit. According to recent reports, Trippier asked to leave the club, and Everton were said to be in talks with Newcastle over a loan move for Kieran Trippier, as the fullback has a very strong relationship with Sean Dyche. However, Eddie Howe in his pre-match interview claimed that Kieran Trippier is a massive part of Newcastle's future and how also explained why Trippier has been on the bench. Trips has trained really well this week. Um, I'm surprised at a lot of the uh, stories that have come out. Uh, a valuable member of the squad. His professionalism has been first class. Um, he's trained really well since he's come back from the Euros. I think he's only had two weeks training, hence the decision to not start him at the weekend. And also Tino's had a very good pre-season. Um, and yeah, that's the situation. He continues to be really valued by all of us. So has he expressed a, a willingness to leave or a desire to stay? No, but no, neither. He hasn't had to. So he's just trained as normal. Um, and he's been, as I said, very good. So, yeah, I'm not really sure where this, this has come from. Similarly, Harvey Barnes as a super sub offered a consistent threat down the left flank, linking up play quickly and delivering a perfectly weighted cross for the inevitable Gordon, who had an 8.0 match rating to score. Barnes's 7.5 match rating, 100% passing accuracy, two key passes, two accurate crosses, and two big chances created, highlighted the impact he can have when given the opportunity. The fourth thing we learned was that Newcastle's luck masked deeper issues in Bournemouth draw. While Newcastle United may have emerged from their clash with Bournemouth with a point, it would be a mistake to overlook the underlying issues that were exposed during the match. The Magpies were undoubtedly fortunate to avoid a defeat, with a late Bournemouth goal being disallowed due to a handball, and Jolinton's questionable close-line challenge on the goalkeeper going unpunished could easily have resulted in a straight red card. Ultimately, the draw against Bournemouth highlights the need for Newcastle to address the fundamental issues within their squad, rather than simply celebrating the good fortune that has come their way. The team's ambitions of European qualification will require a level of performance that they have not consistently demonstrated thus far, and the Magpies must be willing to make the necessary adjustments to achieve their goals. Then, moving on to the fifth thing, and that is Newcastle's transfer business heating up. So having had open talks with Bayer Leverkusen over defender Edmund Tapsoba, he has recently dropped a huge bombshell dagger to appeal the hope of a potential move to Newcastle. Final one about yourself. There are all sorts of stories, you know what's coming. You're here for the season, right? Yes, I'm full focus in Leverkusen, and uh, this season, like, we fight for everything. Every time we win, like, some title, and uh, I'm full focus in Leverkusen. Good, because we want to keep talking to you. <laughs> okay, don't, thank you. Don't man. go running away. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. For your time. So, although Newcastle United are continuing to explore alternative defensive options, such as Axel de Sassi. They are said to be edging closer to reaching an agreement with Crystal Palace for the signing of Mark Grahey, according to Sky Sports' Keith Downey. There was cautious optimism that a deal could be struck by the weekend, with Palace privately accepting that it would be beneficial to cash in on the highly rated English defender while his value is at its peak. Despite the delay in the deal being finalised, as was initially indicated, the transfer is still in motion. During this weekend, Clinton Morrison, Speaking on Sky Sports News, 
stated that he is certain where he will be a Newcastle player by next week. Oh, he will be. He will be at Newcastle next week. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, Mark Gay, he will be a Newcastle player next week. I think it will happen. It definitely will happen. They're not, oh, is, is that based on... No, 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 listen. I, 100%, that's my, my opinion, 100%, it will happen. They're not miles apart. They're, they're only, and that's Eddie Howe's number one target. He didn't really have anyone else in mind. He said to his board, go and get Mark Gay. And mm. surely, Palace, he's got two years left at Palace to try and get something like 70 million for Mark Gay. I think it would be fantastic. Uh, listen, they've lost Joachim Anderson. It's a huge blow, so Palace have to spend. But Mark Gay, I think he will be a Newcastle player next week. The potential move has been further supported by comments made by Crystal Palace manager Oliver Glasner, who suggested that there may be too much noise around the club, potentially hinting at the ongoing speculation surrounding Gwehi's future. Interestingly, during Palace's recent 2-0 defeat against West Ham, Gwehi was seen applauding the home fans individually at Selhurst Park, which some supporters have speculated could have been a goodbye gesture further fueling the belief that a move to Newcastle is imminent. In the match itself, Gwehi again captained Crystal Palace and put in a solid performance, and was praised for his commanding display and ability to keep Mikel Antonio at bay. Despite the loss and losing possession 17 times during the match, more than any other player, Gwehi was also one of Palace's highest rated players on sofa score with a match rating of 7.0. He recorded three clearances, three blocked shots, two tackles, zero times dribbled past, 84% passing accuracy, eight accurate long balls, and six duels won, underlining his passing and defensive prowess. Interestingly, in the game despite being the central defender in the three centre-back formation, Gwehi's heat map from the match suggests that he is more comfortable operating in the right centre-back position, an area where Newcastle currently lack depth, and comparing him to Shah out of those 13 metrics, Gwehi beats Shah in 12 of those 13 metrics, this could make him an ideal fit for Eddie Howe's tactical setup, as the Magpies seek to solidify their defensive unit and mount a strong challenge in the Premier League season. So as the transfer deadline approaches, all eyes will be on the developments surrounding the Gwehi saga. Newcastle's willingness to break their transfer record to secure his services speaks volumes about the club's ambition and their belief in the 24-year-old's potential to make a significant impact at St. James's Park. And if you would want to know about unbelievable story of how one cross killed the career of a Newcastle player who was the best in the world, click the video link on screen now.